When considering habitability, we tend to use Earth as the gold standard of planets in the universe. But even Earth has experienced compromised habitability due to cataclysmic events or climate change. Furthermore, what if there are planets that out-Earth the planet Earth at being Earth-like and are better optimized for the evolution of diverse and complex life? At least two dozen planets outside the solar system might be better for life than Earth. These planets are just a little older, a little wetter, a little warmer, and a little larger than Earth is. All these factors could mean that some of these planets are the best places to search for extraterrestrial life. We need to focus on certain planets that have the most promising conditions for complex life. However, we have to be careful to not get stuck looking for a second Earth, because there could be planets that might be more suitable for life than ours. Astronomers have discovered more than 4,000 exoplanets so far. Most of these are not particularly conducive to life. For example, planet Kelt 9b is so hot that its atmosphere is constantly melting. The darkest planet Tres 2b has an atmospheric temperature of 980 degrees Celsius. On the other end of the inhospitable spectrum is GJ433d, whose discoverers described it as the coldest Neptune-like planet ever discovered. But there are also planets within their star's habitable zone, or the just right distance, conducive to surface temperatures that aren't too hot or too cold for life as we know it to evolve. A recent study aimed to identify exoplanets most likely to be superhabitable, or not only in the habitable zone, but also boasting other features that might make them a good place for life to blossom. These features included a star of the right size and lifespan, especially considering that it took complex life 3.5 billion years to evolve on Earth, and 4 billion years for life as advanced as humans to appear. A large size could mean more space for landmass and habitat. A larger planet would also have higher gravity, which would make for a thicker atmosphere, something that could be beneficial for organisms that travel by flight. A planet slightly warmer than Earth would be more habitable, given a lack of largely barren polar regions. But that warmer planet would also need to be wetter than Earth so that deserts wouldn't dominate the land masses. A more habitable planet might thus resemble Earth in the early Carboniferous about 359 million years ago, when much of the world's land mass had the climate of a tropical rainforest. Modern-day global warming isn't good for life on Earth, both because the change is happening too quickly for many animals to adapt, and because of the effects on human infrastructure due to rising sea levels. Slightly warmer temperatures, however, are not inherently bad for life. A better version of Earth might also have a larger moon, or a moon slightly closer to the planet, which would help stabilize its orbit and prevent life-disrupting wobbles. The researchers came up with a set of parameters to use to meet all these criteria. According to these parameters, the perfect superhabitable planet would be an orbit around the K dwarf star, which is a relatively small star that's slightly cooler than our Sun, which is considered a yellow dwarf, about 5 billion to 8 billion years old, approximately 10% larger than Earth, around 5 degrees Celsius warmer than Earth on average, moist with an atmosphere that is 25% to 30% oxygen, with scattered land and water. The perfect planet would also have plate tectonics, or a similar geological process, in order to recycle minerals and nutrients through the crust, and to create diverse habitats and topography, and would have a moon 1-10% to of its size, orbiting it at a moderate distance. It's not possible to evaluate distant exoplanets on all these criteria. For example, there's no way to calculate an exoplanet's landmass area, much less how it's distributed. But based on factors that can be measured, such as star type and planet radius, the researchers honed in on objects that seem to meet the criteria and have been spotted by the Kepler telescope. 
They found 24 objects of interest, which are objects that may or may not be planets. Two of the 24 have been confirmed as exoplanets, Kepler-1126b and Kepler-69c. Some of the others may be false positives that don't turn out to be planets. Of the 24 objects, 9 were orbiting around the proper type of star, 16 fell into the correct age range, and 5 were in the right temperature range. Only one candidate, KOI 5715.01, fell into the correct range for all three categories. But the planet's true surface temperature depends on the strength of the greenhouse effect in its atmosphere. The 24 possible planets are all more than 100 light years away, and some are probably too far to study right now, even with the strongest telescopes. Kepler-69c, for example, is more than 2,000 light years away, meaning astronomers probably won't be able to examine it more closely for signs of life anytime soon. However, pinpointing what makes a planet superhabitable is important, because it's possible that one of these planets will be discovered within a hundred light years. If so, that planet should be the first place Earthlings turn to to find out if there is other life in the universe. Thanks for watching.